I've been thinking about how important socks are, what they mean to us in terms of comfort and protection, how we have our favourite ones, colourful ones, cosy ones, comic ones, bed socks perhaps, super soft ones that help you drift off to sleep at night. Socks have a habit of wearing thin, of growing holes, especially at the toes, soles and heels. And so I'm going to show you how to darn a pair of socks, particularly how to mend a hole in a sock. There's a handout that explains this too. It's not difficult and it's a good skill to have. It's great if you have a darning mushroom. If you haven't, use a potato, an orange or even a stone. You need something to hold the shape of the sock underneath the hole as you're darning. I've got a yarn here that's the same thickness as the one in the sock. That's important. A thick yarn would be too bulky and a fine one might wear too quickly. I'm going to start the vertical framework, which is known as the warp. Try to catch any loose loops in your stitches and make lots of small stitches that are quite close together. It's best if you can keep them in line, but don't worry if it's a bit wobbly. Your stitching will get more even with practice. So we are really making parallel stitched lines. These will strengthen the area around the hole, which was probably worn thin too. It's like a preemptive repair. And when we get to the hole itself, well, I do like to think about it as being a bit similar to jumping across a puddle and landing safely on the other side. So this is slow, lots of backwards and forwards with needle and thread. And like so many acts of repair, it's not especially technical, but it is transformative and so satisfying. Keep stitching until there's only a few centimetre of thread left. You don't need to knot your yarn at the end. Just bring the needle out a centimetre or so away from your last stitch. Go back in just behind the last couple of stitches and carry on stitching. Leave a tail of yarn. Again, there's no need for a knot. There are so many stitches that they have the effect of holding the yarn in place. I never tie knots when darning especially in socks. You don't want too many bumps and lumps as you'll feel them at your feet, especially when wearing shoes. After a while, I find myself settling into a rhythm and I enjoy making the stitches as much as seeing them. It feels quite soothing, very tactile. It's calming and I'm aware that I'm breathing more gently. Thoughts drift in and out. I notice them, but I do sense that they just drift. Practices like this have the habit of reducing the heart rate, of calming us. There are studies, especially related to knitting, that demonstrate this. Repair can be good for us in two ways, for the thing that we're working on, and for us as individuals, as makers restoring. There's quite a few loose threads now, and I don't want to get tangled up. To cut them off, pull them away from the surface of your knitting and snip. That's the warp threads finished. To add the weft, the threads that go across, over and under and over and under the warp threads, I need to turn the sock 90 degrees and start with small stitches. These new stitches cover the ones I made earlier when I was setting up the warp threads, so it's just the same. So for the weft, I'm using a different colour of thread. This helps you to see what I'm doing and it's an easy way to add creativity to your darn. This is a yarn I've hand spun and hand dyed and it's a beautiful turquoise. This is a really satisfying bit, filling in the warp, passing the needle up and over and under each warp thread. When you've finished a row, Make a couple of small stitches into the main sock before you turn and come back for another row. 
You might notice I'm weaving with the blunt end of the needle, the end with the eye. This is a useful tip, especially if your needle is a bit sharp and catches against threads. Weaving with the blunt end helps to avoid this. So it's the same process, over and under, over and under. You can use the needle to gently press your weft threads into place to prevent gaps in your weave. I enjoy thinking, most often when I'm mending well-loved garments for others, and I do think we can love garments, that darning means bringing the practice of weave into knitting. It brings together two thread-based skills and all their knowledge and techniques. As you gain confidence, you can create different weave patterns, even learn to duplicate or Swiss darn. And when I'm darning for someone else, I find myself thinking of them too, as if holding them in mind, and that feels good. Threading a needle can be a bit tricky. Make sure the eye of your needle is big enough for your yarn to go through easily and try to needle the thread, move the needle onto the thread, rather than thread the needle. And I like my repairs to show, which might sound a bit odd, but visible mends are a sign that someone cared enough to give time to the mending. And sometimes I think of mending and repair as small acts of care, holding something, bringing the edges together, smoothing a surface. These are all small things, but all things we should all value and celebrate. I'm nearly at the end now. I think maybe one more row of weaving. I'm not weaving across the hole now, but I am trying to catch the edges of the warp as it meets the body of the sock. And then I'll make a couple of rows of small stitches to square off the darn. Remember to pull the yarn clear of your sock when you snip the loose ends. You can always add in more weaving, perhaps in a different colour, afterwards. I like to do that. So there you have it, a big hole repaired. The hole in my corgi sock all fixed and I can wear it again. That's so satisfying. It's good for me, my well-loved sock and maybe the environment too. <laughs>